Hi, my name's Stuart Walker from RMS, Reliability Maintenance Solutions Limited. Now we've been using the motion amplification technology from RDI Technologies for many years now. And we've had some amazing results where we can visualize the motion of a machine, uh, work out root causes of different problems. But one of the uh, techniques that we really wanted with the camera was to be able to do non-contact modal testing or impact testing, resonance testing, uh, lots of different ways to describe it. And this is where we have a machine that might have a natural frequency and that might be on the structure or part of a component that when it's excited, uh, the amplitudes rise dramatically uh, and can lead to catastrophic failures such as cracking, uh, bearing problems, coupling problems, seal problems, all these host of problems. But to identify uh, a resonance problem, we need to measure the natural frequencies. And this is where this new modal amplified kit comes in, where we're gonna basically, it's quite amazing, we're gonna use the camera non-contact. We're not gonna be putting accelerometers on to do a modal test. We're gonna use the camera uh, and we're going to use ROIs, little boxes, uh, drawn on the image to actually measure and calculate the natural frequencies. And then beyond that, we'll be able to see the mode shapes where we can actually see the movement of the machine. And when we can see that, we understand it even more. And then we can maybe look at bracing, uh, other techniques like that. Uh, so today, I'm going to use this uh, impact modal hammer and this connects into the modal uh, amplified DAC unit and then that is connected into the camera so it's all synced together. Um, quite an amazing bit of kit. So what industries does this modal testing, bump testing, resonance testing apply to? Well a real wide range really. Uh, we've got industrial like we're here today so you might have problems with fans and pumps and structures and in an industrial environment that you suspect you've got a resonance problem so we could apply the modal amplified there and another big sector is uh, R&D sort of in research and development uh, testing the components uh, manufacturing uh, there's a real need there and a lot of modal testing is done there but what's the advantage really of the modal amplified well for me its biggest advantage is a massive time saving. So if we wanted to model this fan doing uh, modal testing, we'd have to uh, put different accelerometers in different locations, uh, bump it, set up the software for all the locations, uh, for the sensors, it is extremely time consuming. Um, so you say something like this, it might take a, a day to model this where with the modal amplified, once we're set up, we can literally do it within minutes. And the other benefit is once we've got the data, we can take that away. And if I want to draw my uh, uh, measurement points, which are essentially the accelerometers, but we're using uh, a region of interest, a, a, a measurement point, we can move those anywhere later on and recalculate the data. So truly amazing, massive time saving. So for me, I think the, this modal amplified technology, instead of doing modal when you really, really need to do it, I think it's going to bring it into some areas where you can use it a bit like the camera for ODS pretty much all the time because it's that quick. So you might want to just check your test bed out before you do some modal testing and you'll be able to do this quite easily. So yeah, fantastic piece of kit. So how do we know when to use uh, this modal amplified technology or to do a modal? Uh, well, we've got a fan here that's on a routine vibration route, um, an industrial facility. And basically we're getting high 1x vibrations. Uh, we're getting quite a lot of uh, vibration off the casing as well. And uh, we're getting levels of around 20 millimeters per second. The fan's been away previously to be balanced, but we're still suffering from the problem. Um, so it's got all the hallmarks of a possible uh, resonance problem. So what we're gonna do, the machine's off now. Um, we're gonna set the kit up. We've got the modal amplified box tuned into the uh, camera. 
Uh, we've got a modal hammer as well. We've got that here that again connects into the uh, modal system. And we're basically going to set up a job, bump this machine, and then try and visualize the natural frequencies. Now this runs at, I think, 2980 RPM, so just under 50 hertz, 49.8. Um, that's where we're getting the majority of the vibration. So it'll be very interesting when we bump it, uh, are there any natural frequencies close to the uh, running speed, basically. Um, so yeah, let's do that now. Laptop, everything's connected up to the uh, camera. We've got the DAC unit uh, sinking into the camera. We've got the modal hammer connected in and we're we're going to do an acquisition. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the software and we're going to create a project. So got impact shaker stuff, you can stuff with that operation, but we're going to just use the impact one and we'll call that fans. Okay, so it's going to bring my camera up now. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add some light because it's a little bit dark in here. So just as you would with the uh, M8. Right, so I'm going to drop the F Max to 50 just to give a bit more of a wild field of view. We can move this brightness up, that's better. Let's just check the focus. Let's focus there. Okay, right, distance. Let's put that in for the measurements. So I'm just going to put that to the motor. What's that? 2.6. Okay, focal length 12.5mm. Right, you can use on this the dual XYZ camera, the stereo vision, so you could do sort of measurements towards the camera, but we're just going to use a standard Iris M today uh, hammer. So the hammer I'm using today has a sensitivity of 0.23, and I'm going to be doing some reasonable impacts on this one. So I'm going to up the trigger level a bit. Average is 4. F max is correct, brightness, three second duration. And then this is really quite cool now. We can actually draw measurement points. So these would be the equivalent of your uh, accelerometers. I'll leave those distances right. And then we're just going to acquire, okay? So what I'm gonna do, you can do this on your own. I'm gonna in auto sample sound on. I'm just gonna spin the laptop so I can see the data and I'm just going to click collect sample. Okay so I'm ready I've got the hammer connected. What you've got to be careful is not to trigger the hammer here so I'm going to get in position and then strike the uh, casing. That's taken a reading there, nice data. Second average That's looking good. Third average. What you've got to try and do is just hit it a similar amount. I think that'll be it. And you get a little different tone there. So finish with that. I'll save my lights. Okay. Let's turn that off. Right. So we can see here the, the hammer strikes and then we can actually look at the responses from the measurement points. So I'm going to complete that acquisition there. And then we go into uh, stability. So this is where really we validate the data. So I'm going to click this little star icon here, denominator, I'm going to create some data from those measurement points. Oh yeah, straight away we've got some uh, frequencies coming there. Uh, so what you find here is the computer automatically analyzes 
and it'll list on the right hand side the potential mode shapes if it's got a tick it's got really good stabling frequency and damping you can see the software is automatically doing that but that's just that axis there and then we're going to run through so we've got frequencies here around 7, 12, 22 Ooh, that's interesting we've got one at 46 there that is interesting this is where that casing vibrates but definitely some dominant lower ones yeah that one so this one is quite close to the running speed which is 49.8 I think right so that that data looks good so I'm just going to analyze now and what's cool with this now it's put the frequencies in this left hand column we can actually view I'll just brighten up the image a bit you can actually view the raw impact so you see that's what you see with your eye didn't see anything there because we've not amplified let's bring it back let's add a bit of amplification not too much remember this is the raw data here we go hammer going in boom Ooh, look at the floor that is crazy oh it's definitely a long one there ringing out okay so this is absolutely amazing now uh, we can actually uh, pick an individual frequency and it'll automatically crop and filter to that frequency now so the quality is going to go up and then we can basically just visualize this is 7.9 hertz let's increase the amplification a bit yeah look at that rocking this is not a good uh, <laughs> stable machine okay let's look at 12 12.8 12 hertz these are the different mode shapes off the uh, machine and remember this is not running oh look at that so they're sort of going in and out of uh, phase with each other at that frequency that was really quite cool 22 hertz, let's have a look at that one. I'm just going to increase amplification on that, I think that's a bit lower. Oh, that's like a side to side motion. That's interesting. Basically, these are not really bolted properly to the floor, which is uh, causing a lot of these frequencies. 29 hertz, let's have a look at that. Can't see so much in there, I'll just increase the amplification. Okay. And then this is an interesting one. On the casing. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I can just see. Do you know what I think I'm gonna to have to do here is put get a bit closer, put a 25mm lens on because it's a higher frequency. I can see sort of some separation, some rock in there on that casing this is where we've been getting some higher vibration okay that's really interesting so what's also cool um, if say we pick the from here I can tick which ones I want and then I can see the uh, waveform data spectral data so just like you would with a normal modal hammer and analyzer FRF really key frequency response which has got these natural frequencies and then uh, quite a cool one coherence and then again the phase I'm not going to go through every measurement point here but you can see when we get into these resonances you're getting a, a phase shift there and we can look at the data so after the initial uh, modal testing, I wanted to try and bump some different areas on the fan just to check the frequencies. So um, I did some testing on the actual uh, base on the um, gantry floor, but none of the frequencies were close to the running speed. Again, I did some on the uh, 
uncasing and again no frequencies near the running speed so then I focus back onto the actual volute where the uh, motion we'd seen in the MA and the previous modal test and did some more detailed bump testing there and we actually got uh, you can see here we got some nice flexing of that casing sort of top to bottom and this frequency was around 47 Hertz so I then changed some different angles bumped it again drawed some measurement points and got a really clear response at 47.14 Hertz which is within 20% of the uh, fan running speed and you can really see the rocking motion there uh, flexibility on those vertical supports there's the uh, actual running data and you can see that same motion is present due to a lack of stiffness the one on the left is the modal offline and the one on the right is the motion amplified footage so it's quite clear from that data so um, what I'm recommending on this is uh, stiffening the uh, vertical supports maybe some bracing to reduce the uh, vibration levels by increasing the uh, natural frequency of the structure from 47 to above the rotational speed